Recording started. Welcome back to our class. And we are sharing or we are covering the last chapter in the book Receiving God's Guidance. And the last chapter is 14th, which says putting it all together. So we are just trying to sum up all things from whatever we have learned till now. Can I request one of us to read from the book of Job 33 verse 14 to 16 Job chapter 33 verse 14 to 16 For God may speak in one way or in another yet man does not perceive it In a dream, in a vision of the night when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals the instruction. Amen. Amen. So we're just trying to put everything together and, and you know, a re recap of everything that we learned so far. So we must walk humbly before God, always seeking, listening to his direction and obeying him and what he instructs us because God is continue to speak to us in different ways. He can speak to us in dream, vision, through word, through another person, different ways. But we need to keep ourselves open. We need to walk humbly before God that, you know, so that we can perceive what he is, he's been talking to us. He's been speaking to us in different ways, recognizing that and putting uh, putting it together and, uh, you know, guiding our way, directing our way. So there are 11 ways that we studied. We covered 11 ways uh, through which God can speak to us and guide us. They are the word, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Spirit, gift of the Holy Spirit, dreams and visions, prophecies, angels, godly counsel, the renewed mind, times and seasons, circumstances and divine orchestration. The first three, the word, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit are the primary ways through which God can speak to us. When God speaks to us in these three ways, we can take it in all confidence and move ahead in our life. Because and also God always speak to us before in hand. Before in hand. And he can prepare us. Our mind, our heart will be prepared so much that we can step into that call or that situation, what God has in store for us. But the next uh, eight, eight ways that we need to, uh, you know, we need to verify, we need to validate and we need to test. Is that from God? So we need to test and validate what you receive with the word of God and with the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. We need to see how God is leading us. Uh, is it from God? And is it giving us peace? So there are different ways. We need to ask ourselves two questions. One, is what I feel led to do aligned and in harmony with the word of God? Is it aligned to the nature and the character of God? If we have received in any of the other eight things, the secondary ways, we need to question ourselves with these two questions. One, is it what I feel led to do aligned in harmony with the word of God? Is it aligned to the nature and character of God? And the second question we can ask ourselves is, what is the Holy Spirit witnessing or speaking in my spirit about the situation, about the circumstance? Do I sense his peace and his approval on this matter? We need to check. And if you find peace and if you get an approval about it, you can proceed, you can go ahead. But if not, it would be good that you wait on the Lord. 
And also what we can do is we can check with any two or three witnesses about this. If you do not have peace, if you do not have the complete uh, knowledge of uh, what you are stepping in or what you have been led in your spirit, you can discuss this with two or three witnesses. We see in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, Paul writes, uh, he quotes this from the Old Testament, uh, Old Testament from Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15, and he addresses uh, the matter to the local church at Corinth, saying that this will be the third time I'm coming to you by the mouth of two or three witnesses. Every word shall be established. Every word shall be established. So it is very important that we check with two or three witnesses so that we get clarity we are sure about the path that we are taking so that we can uh, we can be safe it gives us the confidence to step into what god is asking us to do sometimes uh, in our own thoughts we may be misled but when we seek people who are expertise in that area when we seek counsel from them they will guide us in the right path so seeking counsel from two or three people is very important because we are safe in the counsel. We are safe and uh, we will not be misled in that. So it is very important to take counsel from two or three people and uh, consider a situation where someone gave, uh, gives a word of prophecy and that, uh, that was... Uh, Give us a prophecy saying that, uh, you know, you would start a business in certain city where you need to leave the city and go to another city and start a business. Now, if you're already having that desire in your mind, in your heart, and you've been preparing and you're waiting for a confirmation of word, then you can do it. Go ahead and proceed with the word that you have received from God. But then you have never thought about it. You have not prepared, but then you just received a word. What we can do is you can thank God for that word, thank God for that prophecy, make a note of it, and then test, is it from the Lord? Do you have peace? Is there an inner witness? You can ask God, God, speak to me by your word, by your uh, by your Holy Spirit. Let me have that peace. You can wait on the Lord. And then you see, once you get the confirmation uh, in your spirit saying that this is what God is asking me to do. The next step is the preparation. Preparation process is very important. You need to prepare yourself to move to a different city. You need to prepare yourself to plan and how to launch the business. And who are the other people, the other vendors or laborers who can come and help you? Then packing a bag immediately and going into the city and then face challenges and uh, face a loss in your business. And then saying, God, you gave me a word, but nothing didn't happen. Yes, God gave a word even to Joseph, even to David, but they did, did they wait for the right time to move in or did they pack their bag and got into action immediately? They waited. Yes, there is a promise of God. And after that, there is a period of preparation. There's a period of preparation. So that's why they say preparation time is not a wasted time. It is very important that we prepare on what God wants us to do. God prepares us. He, he orchestrates the situation, the circumstances in such a way that we prepare ourselves so that we are ready for the next call of God. Where he is moving, where he is leading us. God prepares us in this situation. Personally, we have experienced in our life how God prepares and how he leads. We need to just trust on God. There are times where I, uh, you know, uh, in our Bible college, as I shared with you all, we have this time of supernatural time where, you know, uh, God speaks to us. And during this time where, uh, you know, our students were flowing prophetic gifts with the word of wisdom, with the word of knowledge, so they used to release to each other. 
So one such situation, I still remember, you know, God spoke through one of the students saying that, uh, you know, uh, God revealed it through him saying that, you know, there is a tunnel season that I would be entering. And uh, you also uh, assured that, uh, ma'am, you're not alone, that God is with you. God's hand is much more, uh, much more upon you in this season. You know, I was shocked. Uh, I, it was not like shocked. I was like, Lord, what is ahead of me? But then I took it to the Lord and pray. I started praying about it. I said, Lord, strengthen me. After the word, exactly six months after that, the season changed, situation changed, circumstance was different, and I faced it. And then I remembered the promise. Uh, I remembered this uh, particular word that I received from one of our students saying that this is what God spoke to me. And I said, yes, Lord, this is the season of tunnel. And I'm, I'm, I'm assured that I'm not alone, that you are with us in this season, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. You will help me to overcome this. And during that season, I trusted God completely, completely went on our knees, trusted God to help us to overcome that season. And today I can testify. I can sense in my spirit that the season is over. God has brought us all the way through much stronger, much better out of the season. His hand was upon us during the season. He led us. He guided us. He strengthened us by his word, by his spirit. He never let us down. He never let us to go in shame. But he was with us. So even in the time of warning, God reveals it to us. Even before we could head into a tunnel season, he reveals it to us so that we are prepared and we can trust God in that season, knowing that God is with us. Even in that season of darkness, even in that wilderness season, you're not walking alone, but God himself is with you. And he strengthens you. Just the way I shared yesterday about when we studied about Elijah, during the time of faith, yes, God provided in an unusual manner, but during his season, when things were not good, during his uh, uh, season of, you know, tunnel, God himself was with him. God himself provided him and that sustained him. That strengthened him. So in our difficult season, we can trust God that God himself will be with us. Because we are his precious children. He will never leave us nor forsake us. That's the promise. So just like the difficult time, even the blessing, even before God can bless us, he reveals it to us. Just like how God revealed to Abraham, God revealed to Moses, God revealed to David, God revealed to Joseph. He reveals to us. He reveals to us. And he sets us on course so that we are focused on that great call and we don't give up in the process. Yes, we will face difficulties, challenges, but we need to have this assurance that God is with us and he's leading us. So we are all learning and we will be making mistakes. We are not perfect beings. So when we make mistake, as I said, God is above our mistake. God is above our mistake. He will not rebuke us or he will not leave us or he will not shun us away. Moses did make a mistake. Abraham made a mistake. Moses made a mistake. David made a mistake. Peter made a mistake. But God forgave. God Forgive. When we repent, when we seek God, God forgives. Can one of us please read Book of John, chapter 10, verse 4 to 5 and 27, please?
John chapter 10, verse 4 to 5 and verse 27. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Amen. 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 So my journey in learning uh, to receive God's guidance has not been always perfect. Yes, when I've made mistakes. But then I can assure you, even in my mistake, God has taught me. God has, many, many times God has warned me before in hand. There was a time when I was about to make a mistake. You know, God just woke me up in the night. Suddenly, sleep just went off and I'm getting a verse, prompting a verse. I got up, I opened the Bible and read that verse. It was exactly an answer to my situation, what was I was about to do the next day. He just gave me a word. As I read uh, the inner voice, you know, God, uh, God is, uh, you know, uh, uh, revealing it to me. This is what you're supposed, this is what you're about to do. But this is not a right in my eyes. This is not a right in my eyes. Immediately I gave up. I said, Lord, please forgive me. Even though I've not I have not made any mistake, but then God warns. He is very careful about his children that we should not go astray. Because we know that every action of us will face a consequence. God will want his children to face that consequence. And God can correct us when we give that access to him in our life. We need to allow God saying, God, I surrender, I submit to you. And you know, it is not that we know everything. We are his sheep. You know how sheep are, right? You know, I've been, uh, I visited Andhra uh, uh, once during uh, Bible college times. Uh, we went there on a ministry to one of the simple village there. It was a very nice experience we, uh, we got there. So we went to a sheepfold to see how the sheep are, how they have been uh, 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 grazed and how they have been brought back and, you know, into that uh, sheep stable or fold, we call it. They are very simple. They just follow the shepherd's instruction. If shepherd is not there, they just go scattering everywhere. There are certain season I saw that, uh, you know, the shepherd went before the sheep to lead them. There are certain point where the shepherd goes behind. And there's a certain phase that shepherd just sits and relax and, you know, shepherd just, uh, the sheep just go grazing on the green grass. So the different stages I could witness and see the sheep. I spent at least two or three days there watching how things were in a simple life being. It was a very wonderful experience to learn. So from my learning there, I, I just made a prayer, Lord, I'm just one of these sheep. Sometimes so dumb, not knowing where we are going, what is ahead of us. We don't know. Lord, but I'm very thankful that you are the good shepherd that you are leading me, you are guiding me. You take care of my future, the next step of my life. And you also avoid from me doing any such mistake, knowingly or unknowingly. We can do mistakes, sometimes knowingly also. Knowing certain things are not right, we can step into it. Maybe our situation, our circumstance would lead to do that mistake knowingly. But our God is so faithful. Yes, I remember God warned me when unknowingly was about to make this mistake. He woke me middle of the night. And there was another situation in my life where knowingly, knowing it is not right in God's eye. 
because of the circumstance and situation, I would have led to do that mistake. But praise God. Today, when I look back, I'm so thankful to God that God saved me even from that situation. He literally stopped. He literally stopped from me doing that mistake. I, I remember in my prayer, like, you know, sometimes our prayers are so silly. But that's what me, I just, uh, you know, speak simple to God. I say, Lord, I just speak in the way that I know. And I also get a response from God in the simple way that I can understand. I've always prayed this way, saying that, Lord, even if I go astray, I want you to hold my right hand and bring me back. Because that's what your scripture says that you will always hold the right hand and bring me back. And he's so faithful to that prayer. He's so faithful. So with that assurance, I can tell today to each of us in the class and who will be listening later also, when we pray, let's make the simple prayer. There's no language barrier there because God knows us from our thought, from our art attitude. We can just be who we are in front of him free. And he understands us. He just understands us. And God, hey, God can stop us from even doing any mistake. He can hold us. He can correct us. For that, we need to surrender ourselves and just come before him. Lord, I give you complete control. You lead me. You teach me. You stop me from doing any mistake that lead to a bigger consequence in our life. Because every action, what we do, is what we face in our life. What we sow, we reap in our life. Let's sow things that would be a blessing in our life. Psalms 18.36 says, You enlarge my path under me, so my feet did not slip. True. God enlarges our path. You know, when we go in the remote places or when we uh, go on trekking, you see, not much path is clear. But if there's many people who have walked in that path, you see some kind of path been formed in that place. When we pray, God, enlarge my path under me so that I do not slip. God can be there. He can show us the path. He can create a path. He can create a way where there's no way when we trust on Him. He is our God. We can, we can trust Him in every area of our life. Every area. Because He is all-knowing. He's omniscient God. We can trust our life with him because he knows there's no one on this earth who could know us better than God himself because he knows our end from the beginning. He is our God. He is our Father. The relation that has been restored with God is our Father. He is mindful of us. He can lead us and guide us in the right way. Psalms 25, 4 and 15 says, Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for ye shall pluck my feet out of the net. Very true. You can just trust this verse because this is what God is. When we trust on Him and ask God and say, Lord, you lead me and you teach me. God's eyes are always towards us that he can stop us from, uh, you know, uh, getting snared by the evil. Because we all know that the enemy is waiting to kill, steal, and destroy his children. But then when we surrender ourselves to God, God can pluck our feet out of that net, out of the snare that has been laid ahead of us. And we need to be staying on the side of caution and taking risk in faith. Romans 11, 33 and 34. Can one of us please read? Uh, 
Oh, the depth of the righteous, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has become his counselor? Amen. Wisdom, knowledge, and the decision, the ways of God are beyond our comprehension. We are to constantly learn and learn from God, from His wisdom, His knowledge, and the way God leads us. We cannot put, in, uh, put God in a box and say, this is how God works. He's infinite, is beyond our time and season. We need to seek God and receive His wisdom, receive His guidance. God can guide us and lead us in, you know, in some unusual way sometimes. We would have never imagined, but we need to be open enough to receive it. Just like how Abraham trusted God, he had this inner witness, it is from God. And with that trust, he stepped out of his father's house and he received the blessing of God. God guided Abraham step by step. Step by step, he guided him. In the same way, we can take the risk. Once we are assured that it is God, we have received this word from God. We need to have that assurance that God is speaking to us. And this word is from God. We see in Hebrew 11.8. Can one of us please read? Hebrew 11.8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. So in faith, Abraham stepped out and he, he went. And we see God led him step by step, even without him knowing where he was going. Proverbs 4.18. Can one of us please read? But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. Yes. So when we trust on God, but the path of the just is like the shining sun. When we trust on God, you know, God opens up ways. And it becomes much brighter and clearer each day to day. And staying with the last instruction, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, we see that let a man so consider us as servant of Christ and steward of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in steward that one be found faithful. So it is important for us to be faithful in our journey and trust God with it. When we trust God, God will lead us every season, every circumstances. We see God leading us, taking us to the place, in the right season at the right time. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a saying, wherever God uh, guides you is grace abounds. We have God's grace. Wherever he guides us, his grace will be upon us so that, you know, we will be a blessing in that place. We will overcome all the challenges. Uh, we will be the salt and light of what God wanted us to be in that place. He will make us a channel of his blessing where he leads us. So we need to be open enough and know, God, I am your steward. Lead me in the place where you want me to go. Help me to do the things what you want me to do. Help me to minister to people whom you want me to meet and minister to. When we when we keep ourselves open, when we keep ourselves available, God start using us. There's also another saying which says, God uh, does not qualify the call, but he, uh, he, but he qualify, uh, but he, uh, can anyone remember that saying? 
But he uh, qualifies the call. God doesn't call the qualified, but he qualifies the call. Yes, but he qualifies the call. Thank you, brother. True. We may not have enough of skill or talent to the area which God may have called us. But when you're available, when you're faithful, when you submit and surrender yourself to God, he qualifies to that call. He gives us the skill. He gives us the talent. He gives us the wisdom, increases us in his word, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So in all the areas, one cannot boast on what they have because we need to realize and understand that comes from God himself and give all glory to the God who's the giver of that area. At the same time, if one lacks certain skill, we need to seek God because that is what James 1.5 says. If any of you lack wisdom, ask God who gives us abundantly. The same way, it can be anything, the ministry, the area that God has opened up, the opportunity that God has opened up. We need certain skills to improve us. It can be a language. It can be, uh, it can be the public speaking. Sometime back, I was challenged with this. Or even now, I'm still progressing in many areas, especially when it comes to public speaking or speaking in front of a camera. It was a challenge. I didn't have the confidence to sit and speak for a long time. Sometimes I would have gone blank, not knowing how to speak, what to do. Uh, am I getting any response? It was a challenge. But then I started seeking God and asking God, help me in this area. Help me to overcome this. Because I knew this skill comes from God. I said, Lord, please help me. God strengthened me. He has given me that courage, the strength. He removed all my fears, the challenges that I had. In the same way, when I had to go visit the colleges, on we have a program called Elevate, where we minister to the college students. So there will be about hundreds or sometimes thousands students, depending on the college which we go. So initially, it was a challenge. They scared me with the roaring sound. <laughs> but then I trusted God. Sometimes I imagine myself like David facing Goliath. But when we trust God, saying, God, you be my help. You are my strength. And I see God's power move in behalf of me. God strengthen me. Sometimes much more than what we prepare is what we share. But then that as that situation or that uh, word had been a blessing to the students we see them come share after the class ma'am i was blessed by what you what you thought in the class because this is the area this is a situation that i'm going through in my life and that was a blessing that has changed my thought so god knows each one of our hearts and when we stand there to minister and we allow saying, God, you speak in and through me to minister to your people, to minister to your children, to be a blessing to them. God speaks in and through us. He will be our mouthpiece. He will be our, our, our voice. We are just a mouthpiece. We are saying, Lord, you speak in and through me. The simple prayer that we pray, saying, God, you speak in and through me, activates God to speak in and through us. So all we have to do is be a good steward, surrender ourselves to God in every situation and receive God guidance in that way. Uh, Proverbs 14, 12 says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but it ends in the way of death. So every every counsel or every instruction that we receive 
we need to uh, you know uh, check is it from god is it what the word of god says is, is does this please god am i having peace from the holy spirit so that we can avoid being self driven or stubborn yes there are two ways for stubborn good way and the bad way here we are talking about the bad way being stubborn knowing it is not right front of god we should not be the stiff necked people what moses says in exodus 34 he says that if now i have found grace in your sight o lord let my lord i pray so among us even though we are a stiff necked people and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us as your inheritance that means people were stiff neck people knowingly they were sinning against god sometimes knowingly as i said sometimes knowingly we know this is not right front of god we may be forced into doing that because of a situation or circumstances but then we should not be stubborn we should allow god to help us in that situation lord you move in my circumstance and situation so that i will not sin against you when we surrender ourselves that situation into god's hand so that we do not make a mistake we do not sin against god god is much faithful enough to change that situation to move that circumstance away from us because god a god is a god who you know who leads people in the right direction he will not watch us committing wrong he will not watch us doing wrong when we ask god to help he is more than enough to come change the situation and to help us so we should not be stubborn in deuteronomy 10:16 says stop being stubborn give your heart to god we need to allow god to work in and through us so avoid being aimless we need to avoid being aimless a god how to avoid being aimless we need to seek god's guidance and direction and then work hard plan strategize prepare to see his purpose been fulfilled fulfilled we need to work hard knowing this is what god is leading us so we need to start planning start receiving we need to receive god's guidance is direction so how do we receive god's guidance and direction simple we need to sit with a notepad and pen and pray those who have the gift of tongues pray in tongues when we pray in tongues sit in his presence god reveals things he guides us he can direct us he can give us new ideas new plans above and beyond normally generally in our wisdom in our thoughts in our knowledge we could not conceive that but when we see god you know god gives us his guidance and he directs us when he gives us the uh, guidance and directs us we need to start working hard towards that we need to work out we need to plan we need to strategize and prepare ourselves to see his purpose being fulfilled in our life very very important to see that Proverbs sixteen three and nine. Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his step. So we cannot take this work and say like, okay, uh, no matter what I plan, you know, God directs our ways. But then God is saying, commit whatever you work, you plan, you strategize, do all our homework, and commit it to the Lord, so that. our thoughts will be established a man's heart plans his way we need to do it and god directs his step god leads us and in our leading we should be focused and not get distracted when we are focused you know we can avoid certain distraction that comes our way to break us 
as we see broken focus result in waste of time, energy and resource on things we were not supposed to be doing. So when we allow God to work in our life, he can give us the, uh, the grace so that we can be focused in the things that is ahead of us and not get ourselves distracted easily. And the Lord, the Lord led me as I was on the way. We see in Genesis 24, 27, Genesis chapter 24, verse 27, he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master, Abraham, who has not forsaken his mercy and his truth toward my master. As for me, being on the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. So, any of us on a certain uh, 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 project or a certain mission we are heading, we can trust God to lead us in the way. Just like how uh, Abraham's servant Eliezer went uh, uh, to search a bride for Isaac. He prayed, he prayed and seeked God to lead him to the right place. In the same way as he prayed, God led his servant to the right place and to the right person, Rebecca. He, uh, he had prayed and uh, you know, in the right way, he, he, she showed up and God gave him the confirmation that she is the right person for him. And everything from he going back to his house and how his parents uh, treated him and they were all open enough to give Rebecca to Abraham's son Isaac. So everything went well and in smooth. So when the Lord is leading, you see God's hand in the way. When we seek him, we see his guidance leading and guiding. So we need to trust God for any of our missions, for any of our leading, uh, knowing that God will lead and he will lead us to the right place at the right time, to the right person. So uh, any of the opportunities, even in our life, you see, we can see God leading us many times, many times. God will lead us in the right place at the right time to the right people. And God opens the doors through them in that season. All we have to do is submit ourselves to the leading of God. So when we submit without questioning, we can be led to the right place at the right time. And you see the door open to us. The last year is, uh, you know, we need to avoid dwelling in the past, but we need to look ahead. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, we see that, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is very important of forgetting the past. We should not hold the past. If you are holding the past, you cannot move further. You cannot receive what God is uh, doing in your future. So we need to let go of our past so that we can, uh, uh, we can focus on our future, the blessing that God has in store of us. We need to be mindful of a, of a call ahead of us so that we can, we can press towards that goal. Yes, there are some failures, there are some mistakes that we made, but we need to learn lesson from them, but not hold on to them. And do not have a doubt in facing your future or trusting your future in God's hand. But then just move ahead. Yes, we may have had bad example or a bad experience trusting somebody before. But then that does not mean that you do not trust anyone in your future. Trust God and move ahead. God will lead us. We need to be mindful of a future the call and the purpose of God that is ahead of us so that God can lead us so that we can press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of what God has in store for us through Christ Jesus and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us so Yes, with this, we end this, uh, we end this book called Receiving God's Guidance, that God 
uh, when we trust God, he can guide us in all these 11 ways. And the primary way that we can uh, confidently trust God is in the first three ways. That's through his word, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit and the voice of the Holy Spirit. With this, I'll open up to the class to share their experience of God's leading in their life. And uh, more than anything, what was your learning from this book? There's something new that you learned that God touched you or God opened up uh, those understanding in you. Please feel free to share so it will benefit the whole class and the others who will watch the session later. Brother Subhashish, you would like to share something? Jafina, you would like to share? Yes, ma'am, I say one testimony. Yes, Rebecca. Uh, Ma'am, when I was uh, in school days, uh, I, I I just uh, uh, coming from tuition class uh, with my friends. In that time, I I just um, saw the one cloth store and the one dress which which I was liked, and that dress was hanging in front of this cloth store. Then I went uh, that uh, clothes store with my friend, and I just uh, asked the clothes store owners that uh, how much cost this uh, cloth. Then he said me that uh, six hundred rupees. Then, uh, but in that time I have no money to purchase that cloth. Then uh, I said to the owner that I will uh, come back with my father. Then I will uh, purchase this dress. Then that owner has said me, okay. Uh, then uh, we went from there and uh, I said to my father, and I said to my father that, uh, uh, Dad, I like that dress. Can you purchase for me? Then my father said that, uh, my child, now I have no money to purchase that uh, dress. Uh, next time I will purchase, okay. That's, uh, he liked me, just he they like that. Afterwards, uh, ma'am, I have not uh, uh, satisfied with my father's uh, words. Then I uh, said to my father, no, father, I want, uh, I want that dress right now. But my father said, till you are not understanding, he's saying me. Then, ma'am, I go to the room and I praying to Jesus according to seven uh, Matthew 7 and uh, 7, uh, chapter 7, verse 7. That I've said to Jesus, the, 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 uh, Lord, you have said that you ask, I will give, and I, I want, I want that dress, Jesus, please give me, however, whatever, from wherever you give me the dress, uh, all you give me six hundred rupees, uh, Lord, like this, I prayed to in front of the <laughs> Jesus, ma'am, and uh, then after finish my prayer, I say to my father, uh, Papa, come and we will purchase the dress. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, will bring that dress. My father has said to me, uh, you are not understanding. I have said that in this time I have no money. A uh, little bit salary has gone. That all the money has finished. Then how I will purchase? Then, uh, ma'am, I don't know where that faith has come in my heart. And I have said to my father, no, dad, you come with me. Jesus will provide from wherever. Then that time, ma'am, uh, my father and mother, both of them were gone with me uh, to purchase that uh, cloth, uh, that dress in that cloth store. In that time, ma'am, what happened when we... Um, uh, come to the clothes store, ma'am. In that time, my father uh, stand the um, uh, bike uh, in front of the clothes store. In in front of the bike, my father's uh, two thousand rupees has fallen down. My father's bike in front of that uh, bike, two thousand rupees is there. Nobody is taking that two thousand rupees. Then in that time, my father has said uh, that uh, no, no. I I have seen, man. I told my father, Papa. See, my papa see how 2000 rupees has uh, god has given and my father said yes uh, how it is uh, fallen down and nobody is man is taking the 2000 rupees then my father and my mother is very happy and uh, they are very soaked and in that time uh, uh, my father take the rupees and given to the clothes the owner and uh, purchased their 600 rupees of the dress and uh, left 1400 rupees my father has kept because in that time is very uh, bad time is going in our 
home because no money is there to purchase household things, ma'am. But in that time, uh, our Lord is provided uh, uh, six hundred rupees. I purchased a new dress also and fourteen hundred uh, for household and things. In that time, ma'am, I'm very crying and in happy that Jesus providing in small things that He is giving uh, giving to their child. Why did uh, when I will when we will pray then why God will not uh, provide a big things for their children's ma'am. Uh, this uh, uh, small testimony for this man. Thank you. First, I want to add something. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Please go okay, ahead. I had muted. Uh, <clears throat> actually, as I was going through this book, uh, uh, though. I have read about Eliza, but again, actually, that uh, motivated me. When actually he faced the 450 uh, prophets of Baal, and he is challenging actually that uh, uh, 450 people. Many times, actually, uh, as a minister of God, actually, we are not bold enough to face the challenge. I even don't know that actually before he said, okay, that um, the rain will come from heaven, maybe he will. He has consulted God or not, I don't know, but but the uh, confidence he has uh, before the Lord that if I have said, that means God will also honor me. Even uh, he said uh, three and a half years, okay, there will be no rain. When he uttered, that means he he believed that uh, God, whatever I have uttered, that means God will honor me. Yes. Actually, that actually motivated me that uh, if we are the servant of God, whatever the things we have said, we have to believe that God will also honor us. But uh, the question actually, that actually uh, put God before me, that uh, the way Eliza worked with the Lord, mm -hmm. am I actually uh, working these days? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank sure. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, brother. So let's take this time to pray as we also have the third uh, different class. Okay. Quickly, we'll pray and end this session. And dear God, we thank you for the way that you work in us. Lord, as we end this book on receiving God's guidance, we thank you that you opened up all these 11 ways in us that we may seek you, Lord, to be led by your word, by the inner witness of your Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, by the voice of the Holy Spirit, and by your prophetic word and by the counsel. Thank you, Father, for orchestrating things in our life. So that we may, we may be at the right time, at the right season, and meet the right person, Lord, to receive, to unfold your blessing, O oh Father. Lord, I surrender and submit each one of us in your hand. I pray and I speak that you open up divine, uh, 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 divine interventions in their life, O oh Father. I pray and I, I speak that you open unusual doors in their life, the doors that have been closed for a long time, O oh Father. I pray and I declare that you will open it for them, O oh Father, because your word says in Revelation 3, 7, the door that you open, Lord, no man can shut in the name of Jesus. We pray that every closed doors to be open in the name of Jesus. Every way that has been blocked will be will be removed, will be cleared in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will orchestrate things in their life in the name of Jesus. The situation, the circumstance will no more be the same, but you will change it in the name of Jesus to benefit your children, to grow in your word, to be re rooted in your word, to experience the, uh, the Holy Spirit, the move of the Holy Holy Spirit in their life, oh Father. Lord, I pray that those who are earnestly seeking you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit in them, for the encounter of the Holy Spirit, for them to be led by the Holy Spirit, I pray that, Lord, you will reach each one of them. You will start talking to them with that still small voice within them, oh Father. You will hold their righteous right hand and you will lead them, oh Father. Lord, I thank you that each and every student in our class and the students will be hearing our sessions, oh Father. I pray that you will prepare their heart to surrender to you completely, oh Father, with the all humility, oh Lord, giving you all the glory and saying, Lord, I surrender that you lead me in my life. You are my God. You are my Lord. And I give you complete control that you will lead me in the right way 
in the right path. Lord, I thank you that you have heard every cry of each and every student, every word of their prayer, every desire of their heart, oh Father, from wanting to know you more and experience more of you, oh Father. Thank you for changing the desires from the worldly material things, but seeking and wanting for more of you and your spirit, oh Father. Thank you for creating this urge within us, oh Father, the stir that is within us, which will lead us in the right path, in the right direction of knowing you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' most mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Man. Thank you. Uh, I know due to time, we cannot uh, uh, give in all the inputs, but I would encourage you um, to write to us to know your experience, how the Lord is working in and through your life. You can also use the stream or you can uh, write to us. And you can also use the other, uh, the, the sessions are recorded and been updated on the stream. You can also go through it. So the next week we will be starting with the new book on Code of Honor. See you all. Thank you so much. God bless you. Take a quick break and log into your next class sooner. Thank you. Thank you God Bob. bless. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.